I'm just going to very quickly go over Affliction as a league itself. So, Path of Exile Affliction. You cleanse the... You'll cleanse the Viridian Wildwood of its affliction, earning valuable rewards and alert and earning the yeah, learning the ancient ways of Asmeri Wanderers. And through that, you can get one of three Wildwood Ascendancy classes in addition to your current Ascendancy class, and you can get them on any character. You encounter sacred wisps that beckon you to enter overgrown passages. So basically, of all side areas except for their green. Instead of there being a timer, there's an amount of power you have for light. When you run out of light, you get kicked out. You have to make whatever you can out of the place. Control your challenge. You can collect wisps in the Wildwood, and you can disperse them into the environment, and, ha that and they will inhabit randomly chosen monsters, increasing their power and also their rewards. So basically, you can release wisps from the wildwood as if they were tormented spirits. Probably They probably won't run away, though. Some wisps can grant rarity bonus, item quality bonus, or drop currency items. There's three different uh, wildwood ascendancy classes. They each have something cool that you can get, and you get them... You get your points through doing the quests for each of the different masters in the uh, wildwood. Okay, first Sensi is the Warden of the Magi. This focuses on weapon tinctures, which go into your flask slots. They function kind of like... They function like flasks, but I don't believe they... I believe you just toggle them on and off, and you can only have one on at a time. You basically can swap between whichever tinctures you want to have on you. So this one, uh, it triggers whenever you... Or, wait... No, it just triggers whenever you're on, whenever it's just toggled on. Damaging hits always stun enemies that are on full life. Hits inflict four wither debuffs on enemies that are on full life. Hits deal frenzy charges, as an example. The implicit is something that you can get, and the explicits can be gotten through rolls. You can buy them from a merchant that sells the uh, or the the same quest person that gives you the warden. Uh, Ascendancy Points also sells the Tinctures. Here's another one that just gives you Culling Strike, and it gives you the ability to steal Rare Monsters modifiers. Then there's the uh, actual Warden Passive Tree right here. Hits against marked enemies cannot be blocked or suppressed. Rare and unique enemies within 120 meters have mini-map icons. That sounds fun. Defenses from equipped body armor are doubled if it has no socketed gems. Okay, uh, Colm's Heart. Very good. Plus 50% to all element resistances if you have an equipped helm with no socketed gems. 25% increased maximum life if you have equipped gloves with no socketed gems. 30% increased movement speed if you've equipped boots with no socketed gems. Okay, that's really interesting. I feel like there, there's a whole lot of things you could do with that. Wildwood Blessing grants level 20 bark skin skill, which basically just you gain bark on you over time, and when you take damage, you lose bark instead of losing life, I think. Chance to avoid non-damaging ailments per bark. Reduce duration of damaging ailments per bark. Can apply tinctures to your weapons, so just can use tinctures. Tinctures apply to you have a 75% increased effect per empty flask slot. So they go into flask slots, so... Basically, just however many you want to have. So you kind of have to decide whether you want tinctures, you want flasks, or just like try to minimize both of them so you can get enduring things fusion. And finally, nature's concoction. Flasks adjacent to applied tinctures gain three charges when you hit an enemy with a weapon no more than once every second. Flasks ad adjacent to applied tinctures have a 30% increased effect when used if you've hit an enemy with a weapon recently, so in the last four seconds. Okay, Warlock Ascendancy. So this one's really interesting. The quest person you can buy corpses from. Corpses that you can actually summon as specters. So this is level 64 corpse. This, these are the things it casts, what it uses, this corpse type. Based on the corpse type, that with the, the corpse that you consume, you can get different benefits. So the Ravenous Scale of Blood Hunt here 
is you can eat a corpse of a particular type. If you eat a corpse of a humanoid, you deal more damage to humanoids. If you eat a corpse of a construct, you deal more damage to constructs, and so on. Summon Dark Effigy skill. I have no idea what that does. Probably curses. Okay, Warlock power. She's one of the three attached options. Okay, so there's a Penance mark now. This is really interesting. When, it, when they're hit, it spawns multiple enemy phantasms. Which means that the Penance mark effectively works kind of like a Writhing Jar, except for you don't have to worry about charges. It just spawns a bunch of shit. So if you want a bunch, if you want to be able to trigger on kill effects, the Penance Mark is really good for that. Classify. Curses all targets in area, has no effect at first, but once 60% of the duration has expired, they do not deal any damage for the last 40% of the duration. So if you time that right, you could potentially just make the Shaper completely imp impotent, for example. Very cool. That would require a lot of skill to use, though. You gotta figure that one out. I don't really know how that, how... that sounds hard. Affliction skill. Currently afflicts any of your damage will minions in a targeted area, causing them to take physical damage over time at an accelerating rate. Basically, Affliction is a curse you can curse your minions with, and they will explode on death. Simple as that. Following this line down... Uh... Enemies pacified by you take 20% increased damage, so the uh, deals no damage after 60% of the duration is gone one. Min is affected by affliction, so the uh, explosion one have onslaught. Phantasms from penance mark have a 50% chance to grant a vol soul on death and grant 50% increased flash charges. That sounds really cool. What else do we have here? Sanguinemancy. Skills cost life instead of mana. Skills reserve life instead of mana, removes all mana, life reservation efficiency of skills. So, blood magic? <laughs> but life reservation efficiency instead of more life? Okay, well, if you want to go blood magic, you can ma mesh sanguimancy with that. Cannibalized Faith. Spells you cast gain added physical damage equal to 75% of their life cost, if the life cost is not higher than the maximum you could spend. Uh, Crimson Power removes all energy shield. Gain life instead of maximum energy shield from equipped armor items. Minus 6 maximum life per level. Characters inherently gain plus 12 maximum life per level. Okay. I definitely think of some characters where Crimson Power sounds good. Definitely really interested in uh, the fact that you can buy corpses specifically to turn to specters. That sounds really cool. Um, for example, this is this is just the Hydra, the, the Chaper Guardian, the Hydra here, that you can just spawn because you feel like it. That's really cool. Or you can eat him and gain some of his abilities, I think. The final is the Primalist. Uh, you can get some charms, which you can socket into the Primalist tree here. So charms, for example, they can be rolled differently and you can buy them from the Primalist themselves, the quest giver. Chance to fortify, speed cannot be modified below the base value, so you can't be frozen. Or you can be frozen, but has no effect on you. You can be chill, but has no effect on you. Hinder, maim, uh, pin down, none of those affect you. Uh, movement speed per frenzy charge, 7% chance to take less area damage. First enemies you or your minions kill to explode on death, effects to consecrated ground linger. Uh, so basically, you can get pieces of different ascendancies added as explicits on charms, and those charms can be socketed into this tree here. And you have three charm sockets to put things into. Warcries attempt to shake items from corpses. Your warcries can open chests. So you can potentially drag more items out of already dead mobs, and they open chests, which is cool. I assume that also includes barrels. Increased character size. Equip a Wildwood Rucksack, which is 20 inventory slots. So you can expand your fucking inventory with this, which is amazing. Just has, like, this little extra bar for it. So, our loot goblins. I'm looking at someone in particular right now. <laughs> Might enjoy the Wildwood Rucksack. Then we have our three charm sockets. 
which you can just put different pieces from different ascendancies in. I'll be honest, Primalist is cool, but I am very interested in the tinctures. I really, really am. Not so much with the bark skin, but I'm really interested in... Like, I especially would like the Detect Evil from the Warden. That sounds really cool. Tinctures can apply to your equipped weapons. Uh, it does not specify that they have to be melee weapons. So, all of them. It doesn't even specify that they can't be, like, wands, for example. Your, these tinctures can apply to your wands. So, maybe... Maybe it's anything that isn't a spell? <laughs> Walmart Headhunter. Yeah, the uh, tincture of the chase definitely is Walmart Headhunter now, isn't it? So, oh, so we get to see some of the new uniques. Untouched Soul, Gold Amulet. Plus to max life for each empty red socket, plus to accuracy for each empty green socket, plus mana for each empty blue socket, and plus all res for each empty white socket. Trickster Smile. Reflect Cold, Reflect Lightning, it's Armor Evasion Base, Reflect Fire. When an enemy hit deals elemental damage to you, the resistance to those elements becomes zero for four seconds. So if something does a particular set of type of damage to you, that you can benefit on, you can just destroy them with that type of damage. Pragmatism, Colosseum Plate. Plus 12 to socketed skill gems, holy fuck. Minus 2 to level of socketed skill gems per socketed gem? Okay, so basically... Whatever skill ge or support gems you put in with the skill gem, you have to make sure that they are absolutely worth the slot and not the plus two to level because the plus two to level of, of gems is really really good for certain skills that's interesting turn of ultimatum we'd have tainted catalyst so you can apply a random and type and amount of quality to a corrupted jewelry item sounds great i love that as a side note in addition to ultimatum returning Anyone who has a Metamorph stash tab specifically that they have bought with microtransact like as a microtransaction, it is now being converted into an ultimatum tab. So it will be able to store the inscribed ultimatums as well as still store the catalysts that Metamorph would have. Transfigured gems. Oh my gosh, do we actually get to see some of them now? Frozen Legion of Rallying. Not really familiar enough with this to know what part of this is new. Volcanic Fissure of Snaking. Erupts three additional times. Cool. Bladestorm of Uncertainty. Maximum four bladestorms at a time. That might be it. The raised zombie of falling is really fucking cool. Because you don't need a corpse of the zombie, and you just drop a zombie on this particular location. It's an impact that cannot be evaded. It kills the zombie, and it has a chance to deal double damage, which is fucking cool. I want Ray's Zombie of Falling mines, so you can just, like, drop a ton of zombies suddenly. That would be so cool. Flame Dash of Return. Teleports to a location, damaging, leaving a trail of burning ground, then repeats the teleport in the other direction. Okay, so you can jump forward, and then it jumps you back. Firestorm of Pelting. Flaming bolts rain down over the target area. They explode when landing, dealing damage to nearby enemies. Maximum 10 firestorms at a time. That's a lot more than usual. I think Firestorm Pelting is the old Firestorm ability. Like the old Firestorm style. That's actually really cool. I like having more options. I like the new Firestorm, but this is just as cool to have that back as well. Firestorm of Meteors. A large flaming bolt falls towards the target area. The bolt explodes when landing, dealing damage to nearby enemies. So that's just... Firestorm of Meteors is, is the one we have right now. Firestorm of Pelting is the old one. And both of them we will get as separate gems. Blight of Contagion. So this is... This is Contagion and Blight together. Like, causing each other. Which is interesting. Hindu Channeling adds layers of damage to the debuff. Each of the duration, damaging buff is spread by contagion. So this is kind of like the old frostbolt, frost no or ice nova combination, except for this is your 
Contagion and your Blight working together. Frost Bomb of Instability, which I'm really excited for. This is a less, this Frost Bomb does less damage, but it has no cooldown. It also has a cast time instead of being instant, which means that you can spawn a ton of them. I really want to try this with mines again, like everything else. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just realized Arcanist Bran Ray Zombie of Falling. That sounds amazing. That sounds really fucking fun. Okay, Detonate da Dead of Scavenging. So this does more damage, like way more damage than the normal Detonate Dead, but it can't target corpses you've created. So that is a cool idea. Light Trap of Great Swords. There's a trap which once triggered swings two copies of your equipped two-handed weapon around in a circle instead of your one-handed weapons. That's cool. Double strike of impaling. Killing blows cause impales on enemies to reflect on enemies to reflect damage to surrounding enemies. Cool. Barrage of volley fire. After short preparation time, you attack repeatedly with a ranged weapon. Okay, it's same as usual. The attacks have a small randomized spread. Additional projectiles are fired on the first and last attack. Only works with bows. Okay. Fires four projectiles, fires an additional ten projectiles simultaneously on the first and final attack. Link arrow of bombarding clones. Okay. Fires an arrow at the target destination. When the arrow lands, you are teleported to it, and a clone is summoned. The clone uses your bow and quiver to fire a rain of arrows. Maximum three clones. Dura base duration of 20 seconds. That is really cool. I might actually use Blink Arrow as I move in skill now that it has the cooldown reduction. Don't know if I want if I care about the bombarding clones, but I mean, hey, you could just throw Calling Strike on there, and it's just one extra thing you have, and you don't need to worry about another Calling Strike thing. And then Blink Arrow Prismatic Clone, except for instead of they instead of them firing Rain of Arrows, they fire Elemental Arrows. Oh, so they use Elemental Hit with a bow. Okay, cool. Final animate weapon of ranged arms. Animates a ranged weapon item or lingering blade to fight by your side. Uh, maximum 16 weapons. Okay, cool. The only problem with animate weapon that I, and it's the same problem I have every fucking time, is you need to have items on the ground to use it. If you don't have items on the ground to use it, you can't fucking use it, which makes it kind of not reliable. Like I want, it, like I wanted to just spawn a random weapon. It, like fuck having to have items on the ground. At least lingering blades exist, but like I don't even feel like it. It should be. It should animate unidentified weapons. I think it should just spawn a weapon. That would make way more sense, in my opinion. And be way cooler. Okay, and then supporter packs, which don't fucking matter. So that is everything for Path of Exile Affliction, minus the changes the removal of Metamorph and the addition of Ultimatum in its new form. Very exciting stuff. Okay, for those who are watching this on YouTube, thank you for your time. Hope you would like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notifications.